Okay, we're ready. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we come now before you at this time of tragic tragedy. We come before you at this time of, of grief and pain. And no words can express how these families really feel. And nobody will ever really know how they feel except each one of them. But we come because we love them. We come to show compassion towards them as a family. And we thank uh, Attorney Ben Crump and his staff for being here with this family to address this very important issue as it relates to the tragedy that took place at Sapelo Island. I'm going to open us up with prayer, then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Crump and the families as we proceed. May we pray. Dear Lord, we come to you in our sorrow, grieving the sudden loss of those dear to us. In this moment of tragedy and pain, we ask for your grace to surround their souls, welcoming them into your eternal peace. May they find rest in your loving arms, free from suffering and fear. We pray for their families and loved ones left behind that you may comfort them in their grief, offering them strength and courage to endure, guide their hearts towards healing, and remind them that love never dies. Lord, we also seek justice for those lost in this tragedy, especially their safety failures of negligence have caused harm. Please grant wisdom and discernment to those investigating that the truth may be revealed and accountability brought to those responsible. May justice prevail so that others are protected and future lives are spared from such needless loss. May your light shine upon all of us as we trust in your eternal plan, knowing that even in the darkest moments, your love remains steadfast and unfailing. And I say to the family, it's all right to cry. It's all right to grieve. I, because I want to remind you that weeping shall endure for a night. But sooner or later, if not tomorrow, if not next week, but sooner or later, Christ will come and wipe those tears away. So I want to encourage you now to hold on to God's unchanging hand. He's the same God yesterday, the same God today, and the same God tomorrow. He will walk with you, he will talk with you, and he will be with you through this time of tragedy. It is in thy son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. Mr. Crump. Thank you so very much, Reverend Gandhi, for being, allowing us to be in your cathedral today. Uh, I am attorney Ben Crump, along with attorney Natalie Jackson and attorney L.J. Holloway, attorney Molly Davis, Francis Johnson, Chad Mace, Paul Grinke, and other great lawyers, we are united in trying to make sure that the world never forgets the Sepulchre Seven, those seven individuals whose lives were lost, we believe unnecessarily, unjustifiably, and it was certainly preventable. Present with me today are the great Senator Tony Hill, who has always been a champion for the citizens in this community, and especially as a defender for black humanity. And we thank him for being present here. L.J. Holloway, a courageous leader in this community who has always stood for those who did not have a voice. She is here to make sure their voices will be heard. Uh, also present with us is Reverend Dove and other members of the clergy <coughs> like Reverend Gundy who are praying for these families in their most 
desperate time of need. But most importantly, most importantly, we have the family of the loved ones mm -hmm. that were tragically killed and catastrophically injured in this tragedy off the coast of Georgia, Cephalo Island, while they were on a cultural celebration of the Gullah Geechee community, our African diaspora connection, one of the last documented islands of African ancestry in the United States of America. And they were there for a celebration, and it turned into tragedy because of malfeasance and inadequate infrastructure. And you're going to hear firsthand from some of those family members that were there and the heartbreaking, devastating, just God awful circumstances that led to the death of their loved ones. You will hear from the family of Isaiah Thomas. You will hear from his sister, Katrina Alexander, and her daughter, Regina Branson, who was there with her uncle and Miss Collada in the water, doing everything that they could in that moment to just try to figure out what was going on. And it's just heartbreaking, but God left you here, Regina, to be able to give the play-by-play -play of what transpired so we can get some measure of justice for your uncle and the others. Also with them is Yvette, who is the niece of Miss Katrina, who was also there at Cephalo Island. You're going to hear from the family of Carlotta McIntosh, who we represent also, 93 years young. Everybody said she was the life of any party. Yeah. She was feisty, she was educated, she was articulate, she was just a beautiful elder queen for our community. Uh, also, we have present with us the daughters of Jacqueline Carter, um, Vanessa and Angela, who are just devastated and heartbroken. Some of them can't even speak today because they are still at a loss for words. How could this happen to my mother? And, but they wanted to be here to stand with the families in solidarity as they say that we must get justice for our mother. We must get justice for the Cephalo Seven. We also have Yvonne, she's not here, but we represent Yvonne Brockerton, who is still in the hospital. She suffered severe injuries, but you're going to hear from Mr. Wilbur Gardner, who went into the water with her, and the story of how they were able to survive. He didn't think it was going to, they were going to survive initially, but you're going to hear his story from a firsthand account of how dire things really were that day when the gateway broke. And you're going to hear from Ms. Pearl Davis, uh, she's present here. She also went into the water. She's here with her son, Barry, and her grandson, Noah, she also suffered injuries. And when you hear these stories from these family members who were there and the ones who can tell you who their loved ones were to give them the humanity that they deserve. I mean, 
we want to make sure that the Cephalo 7 isn't forgotten, isn't swept under the rug. I mean, we stand with the Georgia Black Caucus who had a press conference yesterday and said, where is the federal investigation? We want a federal investigation. Had these been seven white people who died in that gateway, you would have federal investigations, you would have resources being offered to the community, you would not let this be swept under the rug. So we're calling on the leaders in our country, the ones who are vying for President of the United States. These are the American citizens who need your leadership now. You need to speak to them. You need to be able to know why, why this happened and why we can never let it happen again. We do call on an investigation, not only on the federal level with the engineers, but we, when you hear the stories about Cephalo Island, and Ham, Hog Hammett, that black community, they believe that they were not getting the resources and the infrastructure. Right. And they do want the Civil Rights Department to look into this as well. We want an investigation on every level to get the answers to how this happened. And we won't rest until we get those answers because we are here today to champion the humanity of these beautiful black elder states persons in our community. Champion the dignity of them and champion the cause for justice for the Cephalo 7. We will get justice for the Cephalo 7 and we won't be weary not one day when you hear these stories, you think about if it was your mother and your father, y'all on a celebration, an excursion, and it, it suddenly turns to tragedy. Wouldn't you want those individuals who were supposed to make sure it was safe to be held accountable? You know, we're calling President Biden, Vice President Harris, the leaders at the very top of our federal government to call for inquiry on every level for the Cephalo 7, these six black citizens and one white citizen who all died in a tragic, tragic, tragic way. With that, uh, Attorney Natalie Jackson is going to address you briefly to talk about what the legal team is looking to investigate because we don't trust the state of Georgia being able to investigate themselves in this matter. And that's why we're calling on independent investigations to take place. Attorney Natalie Jackson. Good morning. I'm Attorney Natalie Jackson. I'm the co-director of litigation for Ben Crump Law. Uh, our firm right now, we've got a team of lawyers looking into the government entities um, that were responsible, such as the Department of Natural Resources, the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, um, which were the people who were um, own and maintain this ferry. We're also looking at contractors and construction companies, if there's any construction or repairs that were there. We're looking for dock operators and ferries and um, seeing who was responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of these ferries. We're looking at the engineers and designs, if there's um, any sort of design defect. Um, looking at the, the manufacturers of the materials that were involved in these designs and in, in, these, in the um, gangway and any private ownerships also and what their role were. One of the things that is interesting about this case, even though 
it happened semi on land, because it was a gangway, it falls under admiralty law, so under the admiralty extension law. So we're going to be um, really looking and diving into that. Uh, so as Obviously, we've ordered records. They take a long time, public records requests, those type of things. And as we get information, we'll be willing to share it with the media. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Attorney Jackson. And you're going to hear from Mr. Gardner and many others how that gateway broke in two in the center is what they believe. And so it caused a lot of questions to develop, as Attorney Jackson was saying. When was it constructed? When was it last inspected? What was the weight restrictions? What would make this give way so easily? Had it been any cracks in this gateway prior to this? I mean, those are questions that have to be answered. I, I, I looked at my phone, and I guess people are watching live, and they said, no, nah, there needs to be a federal criminal investigation as well if people cut corners that led to the loss of life. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we're going to be calling for an investigation on every level because they deserve it. Their lives mattered. They were loved, they were cherished, and they should be here. They should be here. With that, we're going to now hear uh, from Senator Tony Hill, longtime senator here in this community and a great leader for the black community. Senator Hill. Again, good morning. Uh, yesterday we were in Sapelo Island with uh, the Georgia Black Caucus. And uh, I just want to come and let you know that they're going to be vigilant as they go through the different steps in terms of the engineer, in terms of the plank. They're going to make sure that that is done right. And uh, I told them that uh, Attorney Crump was going to be here today, and I want to just bring that sense of comfort to the family that it will be investigated. Thank you, Senator Hill. And before we uh, hear from the family, uh, well, she is family, but she's also uh, serving in a capacity with the legal team. But we're going to hear from L.J. Holloway, who uh, is not only a great community leader, but a family member of one of the 707, Ms. Kalala, who lost her life. Uh, Ms. Holloway. Thank you, Attorney Trump. Good morning. I stand here not just as a person who had to pause her congressional campaign, but I stand here as a niece who not only trusted the wisdom of her great aunt, who was 93 years young, Carlotta Tunsil McIntosh. I also stand here as a church member of Mr. Isaiah Thomas, and I knew many of the persons who are still hospitalized. So I am standing here not only as someone who is seeking federal office, but as someone who wants to make sure that there is justice for the Sapelo 7. We know that the infrastructure was inadequate because had it been properly inspected, we would not be here today. Right. Amen. I, my heart goes out to those, so those who are suffering from survivor's remorse. My phone is ringing off the hook because there are so many persons who went to Sapelo Island for a celebration. However, they are now having nightmares from what they witness. So I stand here with the Ben Crump Law Firm and with these families and also with those who are impacted from Georgia to Florida as well as those persons who live on Hog Hammock in Sapelo Island to say that we will not stop until justice is served. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Holloway, for your courageous leadership and advocacy for these families, especially your own family. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the hardest part of this press conference because um, you're about to hear from people who were there, people who went in the water, and they have nightmares. And you heard L.J. Holloway talk about survivor's remorse. Um, the person who I guess has the most information is uh, just petrified to speak to you today, but I told her I'll be right by her side. Her aunt would be by her, her mother would be by her side, her cousin, and we just pray for her. We just ask that you keep her in your prayers because I've heard people talk about PTSD. This is PTSD yes, to the hundredth degree. Um, you're going to hear from Miss Regina Brentson, who with her Uncle Isaiah was helping Miss Collada in her wheelchair when the gateway broke, and they all three went into the water. So, yeah, I'll pray for her as she try to take her time and tell her story of what happened. Good morning. Um, as he said, my name is Regina Brinson. I was one of the ones that, as we were getting on the gangway, I realized that a very dear friend of ours was still way back on the dock. And I turned around and I said, I got to go get Miss Collada. And I went back to go get her. And when I went to go get her, she said, I can't walk. You're going to have to push me. And I told her, I say, the nurse in me is telling you that's not safe for me to push you. On a walker, you can tumble over. I pushed her about two steps, and I realized, I said, I can't do this by myself. So I called my uncle that was already on the gangway behind my mom, and I called him and I said, Uncle Bubba, I said, come and help me. And he came back and he helped me. And I said, you hold on to the front of the walker, you pull slowly, and I push slowly so the walker wouldn't turn over. And we did. And when we got in the middle of that gangway, I heard a crack. Then I looked, and all I remember is releasing the walker, and Miss Collada just fell straight down in the water. And I looked up and I said, oh my God, what is happening here? All of us ended up in the water. And the currents just pushed probably about a good 10 of us away from the ferry. It just pushed us and pushed us and pushed us. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? And then I realized I saw my uncle. And I said, Uncle Bubba, grab. I said, grab my hand. And he grabbed my hand. But he grabbed my shirt too. And he kept pulling me and pulling me and pulling me under the water. And I kept saying to myself, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I had to take it, his fingers one by one and peel them over my shirt. And I floated back up to the top and I saw his face and I was like, Oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? And he floated by me. I was like, what did I do, Lord? It took everything out of me to just make it to land. I can't even tell you. I was in the middle of that water. It wasn't nothing but God's grace. 
for me to make it to land. And I didn't swim. I did not swim at all. I just, I tried not to panic. And I asked God to give me strength to make it. I knew just to keep my head above water and just move my legs and my arms. And that's what I did. And when I got to land, I just collapsed. I collapsed. I couldn't do anything. And then someone came. And they pulled me up on the shelves. And I just laid down, and I laid down, and I laid down. Like semi-unconscious, I just was like laying there for a very long time. And then someone ran over to me from the dock and said, I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse. I'm going to turn you over in your back, and I'm going to beat you in your back. And that's what she did. And I started coughing and bringing up brown water out of me, still coughing and bringing up brown water, could barely talk, could barely breathe. And then I realized, I was like, oh my God, my mom doesn't know if I'm alive, if, she, if I'm dead or alive. So then I asked her, I said, can you call my mom? And she tried to call my mom, but of course my mom didn't answer. My mom didn't answer because she was hysterical because she didn't know what was going on with me or my uncle. Then I said the only other person I remember a number at that time was my daughter. I said, call my daughter. And they called my daughter and they said, your mom was in the water. She needs you to call Tracy. Call Tracy. Tracy didn't answer because they were all panicking on the ferry. It seemed like it just took rescue them forever. I guarantee you forever. We were on the other side of the island. It just took them forever. I just heard people running by saying, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Rescue wasn't even there yet. And I was like, oh my God. I kept asking about my my uncle, where is my uncle? Where is my uncle? No one could tell me anything. And the next thing I knew, they were transporting me to the hospital. I didn't even know what hospital I was going to. I was just there. I was just there. <clears throat> Regina, it, it, this is so hard because when I first talked with Regina, <coughs> with Attorney Jackson, the one thing she kept saying, I tried to help him, I tried to save him. She was trying to save her uncle, but in trying to do so, both of them were going down. And she said, I, I, I don't know what I could have did, Attorney Crump, to help. He, he was pulling me down, and, and I knew we both were going down. And, she says she had to remove his hand, and she still has nightmares throughout the day about seeing his face. And so the one thing I continue to tell her is this is not your fault, and this is the fault of those who were supposed to make sure that that gangway was safe for people to come and cross it. You are a hero to try to help Miss Collada and to try to help your Uncle Isaiah. So I know you continue to doubt everything about that day, but just know from us and all the community, you are a hero for your yeah. uncle and for everybody. Yeah. And we're praying for you. The community, the country is praying for you. Yeah. 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 So we will continue to pray for you. Um, and now we will hear from her mother, who was also on the island, Miss Katrina Alexander. Good morning again. My name is Katrina Alexander. And my brother, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah. He was a loving, kind brother. He would do anything you ask him to do. 
He loved working in his church in the pantry and the culinary department there. You wouldn't want no other better friend than Isaiah Thomas. He has two, cho three children. I'm going to miss him dearly. He's, I have been his caregiver for many years. Live with me. But I thank God as well as it is. That day, when Wilder Park went to Sapelo Island, when we got there, there were so many, 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 many people. We arrived at 8.30. We were not able to get on the ferry till about 10, 10.30. That's just how many people were there loading. And they were taking the tickets as they load. The same amount of people that went over were the same amount of people that came back. On the way back, they did not take tickets. We had ticket stubs to return back to the mainland. They just told everybody to go. And that was too many people. We were elbow to elbow pushing because the last ferry that was going to leave was going to be between 3 and 3.30. And it was at that time between 3 and 3.30. My friend Annette Hill and I, we just made it cross. She's 96. We just got cross. There was just a few people behind us when we heard all the screaming and going on. And, and so I turned around, and, and when I turned around, I couldn't believe what I saw. And I was just shocked. And for a while, I would just couldn't say nothing. I just stood there at bar, looking down in that water and saw all those people. And then it hit me. Regina, Regina, where's Regina? Oh, my God, where's my Regina? Oh, God, please, where's my Regina? Oh, Lord, please, where's my Regina? And that's all I could think about. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, what about your brother Isaiah? What about your friend of 20 years, Galata, and all the other people? He spoke to me. I said, oh, my God, forgive me. I forgot about my brother, Galata, and the rest of the people. Please forgive me. And then I prayed for all of them for two hours. I didn't know about nobody. I didn't know who was alive. For two whole hours, till my granddaughter called me. And she said, Mama, it's in the emergency room. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord, you answered. You answered, you answered, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. But it was hours and hours after that before I found out my brother and my good friend, Galata, Hours and hours of agony. But we can always find a blessing because it could have been me and my other 96 year old friend because we just made it on the dock. So I told her that last night. It could have been the worst day of our life, but we found a blessing because God saved us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Regina and Katrina, your mother. Uh, before we have uh, Mr. Gardner uh, talk, who was all there, Miss Yvette, do you want to say anything? I, I know you were there with Miss Katrina. Yes, hello. I was one of the seniors that was on the trip. And I barely made it across myself. I did get to the ferry and put my belongings down, and I thought, where's my aunt? So I turned and ran back out of the ferry door, and that's when I just heard and saw people running, screaming. I looked across, and I saw the 
the ramp in the water and I saw Miss Yvonne just barely hanging on it and I spotted my aunt and I ran. I saw she was hysterical. I ran and took hold of her and she just started screaming, Regina, where's Regina? Where's Regina? Like she said a few minutes later, she started saying, she just said, where's my brother Bubba? And then she thought about Miss Galata because I picked Miss Galata up that morning and we were just crying and screaming and it was just so many people. Like she said, it took so long. You know, you can see it's just people on the other side just laying out. Just people trying to revive them. It was the most horrific thing I have ever experienced in my life. And I just pray for everybody that made it. And I pray for those families of the people that didn't make it. And I just, I'm just so, so terrified. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Thank you for being there for your Aunt Katrina. Uh, we have another person who was present there who has a story from his perspective. And um, it's just heartbreaking, but thank God you survived. Yeah. Mr. Weber, can you step to the podium and t take your time? And I know this is emotional. My name is Wilbur Gardner. I was on that trip with the seniors. Miss Yvonne Brockerton, she persuaded me some years ago to join Wally Park, senior citizen. It was enough during that ordeal during the trip, but on the trip, it was enough room. She said, God, I call you. If someone didn't make it, didn't decide to go. So she called me and said, God, I have a spot for you. I said, okay. So during us returning to the ferry, me and Miss Yvonne Rock Brockerton was side by side, and a couple more people side by side. I think this little here. This, uh, Miss Katrina? Katrina? No, Katrina. Katrina. We, 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 we was in the Pearl. And they pushed the uh, survivor. And when the, plant, when the plant broke, like this here, some was on the other side, and I was on this side, me and Miss Brockerton. Explain how it broke, what you saw, Mr. Wilson. I saw it when it broke, this here, and it collapsed, like this here. A lot of people on the other side, I was on this side, of, I was on the, I was on the, I was on the, I was on the right side. People on the left side falling in the water. I said, "Oh, what God? What's going to happen?" And I braced myself, put myself up on on the rail, put myself to safety on the rail, and the other fellow pulled me up. And Miss Miss Brockerton, she was, I told her to hold on, hold on. She said, "Okay, God." And some more fellow did. Get throw a, a lifeline and pull it up. And I remind me, remind there was a there was a short verse in Joshua, where the Lord told Joshua, "You're old, but you still have work to do." Mm -hmm. And myself, I can say I'm old, but dispel me, I still have work to do. So I'm still able to test. <laughs> I know he is. I'm a living witness. Yes, you are. And, and Mr. Gardner, you, you are a hero as well because I remember you told me when that bridge broke, you went into the water and you were able to grab on and pull yourself up. But Miss Yvonne, uh -huh. you said you knew she, she couldn't pull herself up, so you instructed her. What did you tell I her? I told her to hold on. Hold, hold on. Her. Hold on to the guardrail. She was at the bottom of the guardrail. But but the other part in the water, she, uh, she bottoms in the water. I told her hands, hold on, hold on. She held on. If you want to live, you say hold, hold on. on. I told her hold on. She held on until they bring her cable to pull up the safety, pull up the safety. When they pull up the safety, when they told she's a gardener, you're not going me anymore. I said, Mr. Brown, I'll be with you always. I'll be with you. Thank you so much, Mr. Gardner. And e even though
As you can see, we're in desperate need of uh, mental count health counseling yes. for the PTSD. Uh, we know we've been working with uh, Gina Cabarrus, a mental health counselor, but we need the government to offer resources. Like I said, why isn't this being treated like a, a natural a, a catastrophe? where the federal government is expending resources to help these families with these horrific stories. Ms. Yvette, I'm sorry, Ms. Yvonne is still in the hospital now and able to walk. Uh, I mean, these, there are some serious injuries here. And as many people told us, our clients, that nobody has reached out to them. Well, we're here now making a passionate plea to the federal government, these Georgia citizens, these Florida citizens, these black senior citizens need resources too. We need to make sure that we treat them as the great American citizens that they are. They are just as worthy as any other citizen. And so we're are the calls from the top of the government to these families saying, we feel your pain. We want to make sure you get adequate resources. We're going to find out, Katrina, why your brother's dead. Regina, we're going to find out. Ebony, we're going to find out why your grandmother was taken in this way. Angela, we're going to find out why Miss Jacqueline was taken. Where is the leadership for the Cephalo 7? Yeah. Yes, sir. Where is the leadership? Um, at this time, you're going to hear from Ebony, who is the granddaughter of Ms. Collada, uh, to talk to you about just how special she was. And she's with her husband, Brian. Thank you. I first want to thank my longtime friend, Regina, for trying to save my grandmother's life. I truly appreciate you for that. Grandmother Collada, as Mr. Crump said, was 93 years young. She w there was no old in her. She was vibrant. She was spunky. She was feisty. She was my world. Mm -hmm. She died doing exactly what she wanted to do, live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. She had an upcoming trip that was already paid for and she was so excited about a cruise in December. She never let water get under her feet. She was always on the go, mm -hmm. the life of the party. I asked, one of the things I asked my grandmother was, grandmother, what is the key to longevity? And she said, you know what, I wake up every morning and say my prayer of serenity. This will forever be in my heart. This is something I will do for the rest of my life, give the prayer of serenity. My grandmother, not only is she, she's a mother, she's a grandmother, mm -hmm. a great grandmother, a great, great grandmother, very, very involved in the community, belonged to many organizations. I can go on and on. She's a res retired special education school teacher, but she's taught all of her life. It, her retirement just didn't end with high school. I'm forever grateful for my grandmother, the love, the wisdom, and everything she instilled in me, my siblings, and my family. And I just wanted to say to all the families of this tragic situation, I am praying for each and every one of you, yes, as you will yes. for me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And it is very important to note that her grandmother was 93 years old, and she didn't die of natural causes. Mm. She died from negligence. Yes. All of these individuals, Miss Katrina talked about how Isaiah was just months away from his 80th birthday and how they were talking about how they were going to celebrate his birthday because these senior citizens were 
vibrant people. I mean, they would help and lead this culture uh, tour, this excursion, so young people could know about our history. That's what kind of senior citizens these were. They loved our community. They loved our history. They loved black culture. And they wanted to make sure that black history and black culture was going to be imparted to the young people. And they should not have been taken this way. Should not have been taken this way. Um, we're going to have Reverend Gundy come back to you because in talking about young people, he had members of his church, young people, who were on that excursion. Reverend Gundy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Crump. I just want to make this very clear. I, you know, we're definitely going to have to address this from the emotional uh, support, mental health issue. But in this church, there were eight people that were impacted by this tragedy. And I have three of those young people and their mother sitting in here now. And yesterday when I was beginning their counseling session, I asked the three children, come on up. Y'all come on up here. I asked them, I said, you know, how, how, are you, how are you handling this? How do you feel? And one was saying, you know, I was scared. The other one said I was scared. And then Marcus, he said, Pastor, I start praying. Mm. Yeah. Which, which, which tells me. But the experience that they had doing, and the other, and the mother, she's just full of anxiety. Their grandmother's up here. They just can't stop crying. This has what we call transgenerational trauma that has going to be lasting them for a lifetime. And so we have to address not only just the adults and the families here, but we're going to have to address all those young people that was on those boats and on that, and during that time. We're going to address everybody that was a part of this has to have some kind of emotional support. So as part of them requesting this, we've got to find the resources to give them what they need so they can get through, because this is going to be truly post-traumatic stress disorder that's going to last them for a lifetime. They're already losing sleep. But I just wanted to bring that up and let you see that these children were involved too, and we want to make sure that we do something to address them as we move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Reverend Gundy, for your leadership and pointing that out. Everybody who was on that gateway yeah. has psychological trauma now. They all saw people die. Yeah. I mean, they talk about walking on those shells and how hard it was mm -hmm. trying to help people. I know Regina talked about those shells and so many people. Uh, we finally are going to hear from Miss Pearl Davis and her son, Barry Davis, who she also fell in the water. And uh, thank God she survived, but she suffered physical and psychological damages from what she experienced. She also has her grandson, Nora, here with her to stand with her as well. I can only say I wish this was a dream that didn't come true. Nobody knows what it's like to go under the water and then somebody will help you out and bring you out. It's a dream that you wish that you hadn't had and never would come to. To come back on the bus with the people and miss the people that you went with. It's really, really, really hard. And I'm asking and the fellow that helped me, may God continue to bless him and give him strength to help others if they have to go through this. Because nobody knows what it's like until it happened to you. And I thank God that he has made this possible for us to let the world know what's going on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. Yeah. And as I said, there are other family members here, but they're too overcome with emotion to be able to speak about the loss of their mother, Jacqueline Carter. Uh, it's just truly devastating because they, they could not believe when they got the phone calls about their parents dying in a bloody, gra a bloody watery grave. They just are devastated. You want to say a word? Okay. We're going to hear from Vanessa to talk about her mother, 
Ms. Jacqueline Carter. Angie, you want to stand beside? And their spouses are here with them. Strong family unit that was anchored by their mother. My mother was Jacqueline Carter. And ever since she retired, she's been on the go. There was nothing wrong with my mother. She was perfectly healthy. She was perfectly fine. And she should have come home to us. And like the lady said before us, she had trips already planned. She was on the cruise in December as well. She was a part of everything, mm -hmm. senior saints, the Wilder Park community. She was always collecting things and taking food to people that's in their homes and helping her friends clean their homes and her any sister. of them, her sisters, and needed medication and people that depended on her. We needed her. She was an angel. And she never complained. And I would say, Mom, please stop running yourself into the ground. And she was just, she needed to do that. It was just a part of her and who she was. And she loved us. And any time we needed anything, she was there. She was a friend. She was my best friend. And she was not just my mom. And she could not be replaced ever. She should be here with she us right now. Yes, ma'am. She was a Thank you so much, Vanessa, for letting the world know that your mother was special and she was loved and that she mattered. And again, her mother, like the others, they did not die of natural causes. They died of negligence. And we have to continue to proclaim that over and over and over again because there's this tendency to say, well, all those black people were old people. Why should we care? Because their life mattered, and they had so much more life to live and to give. Miss Carlotta, I mean, there's videos of her dancing. There's videos of her teaching young people. You heard about how Miss Jacqueline Carter would help other seniors clean their houses, get their medication. These were servant leaders for our community. They were heroes and sheroes, and they should be exalted as such. They should not be swept under the rug. Absolutely not. We will get justice for the Cephalo Seven. Please, absolutely. You want to walk up? She, she just wanted to share the photos of her mother, Jacqueline Carter, this angel in our community. <laughs> True angels. Thank you so much, Angela. Is there anybody else? We will continue. Well, do you all have any questions? Is there, are there any questions? Just as a housekeeping measure, um, just to make sure we know what the spell name is. Yes. Regina, can you come and spell your name for them? And y'all, please keep Regina in your prayers. R-E-G-I-N-A Brinson, B-R-I-N S-O-N. You're welcome. Uh, Katrina. Ebony. Oh, Ebony. Yeah. Ebony. Oh, Your whole name. Ebony Davis. It's E-B-O-N-Y D-A-V-I-S. Okay. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you. Katrina. K-A-T-R-E-N-A. -E Alexander. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R. Uh, Ms. Yvette? Yvette Jackson, Y-B-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E. Jackson. Okay. Uh, Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa, your whole name? Uh, 
your house better than being there? I'm the I'm the B A N E S S A. Williams. You got Wilbur. Go Thank on. you so much for that. Uh, Wilbur, uh, you not? Okay. W I L B U R. B E R. T. Okay. Wilbert. Gardner. G R D N E R. Okay. No, you want to spare your grandmother's name? Yes. 